This episode is brought to you by FanRoll, your source for premium gaming dice. Get 10% off dice and dice accessories at fanrolldice.com with our code TRIALS10. They have a huge selection of metal, resin, and even a couple of other novelty dice. Uh, so go check that out uh, and get 10% off your order with code TRIALS10. Welcome to Conversations and Catapults. I'm your host, Nathan, and today I'm joined by some gamblers with gumption. Say hello, gamblers. Hello, I am a gambler with gumption, and my name is Ben, and I play the level 11 Boobolero. You can say it now. You can, we had a combat. Th- yeah, can know. I say it now? Yeah, okay, this is yeah. Well, he, yeah. He's a fighter. What kind of fighter a rune knight if that wasn't obvious oh i was asking about the uh race because you never actually like mentioned that but oh yeah he's a tiefling all right perfect got it in one you're a fighter i'm not a fighter i'm a lover not a fighter it's me integrity idol very played by carla and integrity is a level 11 tiefling roglog but that doesn't matter here because this is cnc <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, and on Trials and Trebuchets, I play Mira, the level 11 half-elf bard who, I mean, doesn't like gambling that much. It's just, hang on, let me just... Oh, hang on, let me just count these. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm the gumptionist gambler. I'm Sam, and I play the level 11 human sorceress, Sarah Neff Sinderman. Wanted. Damn it. (laughs) I didn't have a way to go with that. (laughs) Well... It's so good to have you all joining me once again. It has been many weeks since we've recorded just due to various travel and like holiday stuff. That's how it goes. But we are covering it's been a, a year. Yeah, like a wide swath <laughs> of episodes. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be sitting with all of you once again because we started this arc on a really bright, happy note of Winsler's funeral. <laughs> Um, I forgot that's how we started this. Yeah, I wanted to put everything in perspective as you all are like gearing up for probably your next funeral if you all keep on going down the road you're going. We're Mm -hmm. going fine so far. Eh. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, If we sound confident enough, maybe we'll be okay. It's fine. I have 10 whole hit points. Wow. A whole (laughs) 10. That'll get you far. (laughs) The only hit point that matters is the last one. Damn. True. (laughs) But no, I wanted to talk about like we saw that character off, which I thought was very nice. I really appreciated how much thought went into what your characters all said about Winsler at the funeral. Like, tell me what you were thinking as like you were devising what your characters were saying at Winsler's funeral. Three pronged for me. What would be an appropriate thing just to say about Winsler as a character more broadly, like give him a good send off? Well, not ter- permanent send off, but uh, two, what would Mira say? What would she remember about him? Three, how can we make the listeners cry? A hundred percent. That last part is very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the primary motivator. How can I make people we cry? Make- <laughs> that is like one of the best things ever. But uh, <laughs> Sorry. at that moment, you know, like you're very emotional thinking about. Like, even even if Ben is playing with us as Boo, I still, like, think about Winsler and miss Winsler, even though I'm mm-hmm. playing with a person who played Winsler, you know? He's an entity of his own. Yeah. Like, it's so weird to miss someone that does not exist. So you think about it, like, when, I, when Integrity was trying to speak to Winsler as a dead person... Just thinking about like memories, like what would be the notable things for integrity and also just like how does a grieving person sort of react to a death of someone so important? Mm-hmm. Uh, because, you know, these the they're friends, right? Like they're all best friends. So how would one react to that whole scenario? And also with how that fight went where it's like, you know, there we were so close to we won, but we also lost so much. So that sort of informed how I reacted to like that feeling of defeat. Mm. Absolutely. I'm just going to say like, like the funny haha joke of like, 
how are we going to get, how do we get the audience to be really, really sad? But also just Sarah Neff being a person that's very like, st- all, who always gets stuck, stuck in the what ifs is sort of taking this as, it's weird, it's weird to say that she's kind of ha- having this as like a motivation because now she's, now that, that one of her friends has actually died, it, you're definitely trying to like, how can we make sure this feeling how do we make sure that our friends never end up in that situation again? Which is ironic seeing as where we are right now. But yeah. <laughs> Very true. It's interesting to hear those perspectives on the send off. But I would also like to hear what all four of you have like, what were your thoughts and like goals when trying to integrate Boo? Because that is a difficult thing. We are like, 200 plus episodes in and hey there's this new guy that you have to care about now he's not a student he's just a rando he's just some asshole yeah Yeah. he's a scumbag (laughs) which is the best i I feel like that makes it easier to incorporate boo into the dynamic because he is so radically different from winsler so it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be this way Mm -hmm. of like how do we fit in a close bond with somebody who we have been going to school with for over a year at this point. Well, you don't. Mm -hmm. How do you interact with like an asshole scumbag who you know you are going to screw (laughs) over and who is trying to screw over you? That's very different. And that's very fun to do. Me as a player. Let me give my insights on this whole thing. (laughs) Yes, please. I absolutely adore Winsler. He's the joy of my, he's the joy of my heart. My, my little creation, but I also like to be the instigator of party like dynamic or be the focus for which I guess lines are drawn. You're a little shit in a way is. is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> I like to I like to cause trouble in a way to sort of provoke reactions from the party in an emotional way, right? Mm-hmm. I play assholes or villains on the second time around, if my first character tends to die or something, to play off that sort of, this character is gone now, this is somebody who's in their place, can your, like, will your bond with everyone else be able to withstand this, or Mm -hmm. is it too much for your characters, and is this going to be, like, a breaking point, basically? Hmm. Hmm. Evil. (laughs) Yeah, I'm curious about, like, what all went into your thought process when creating Boo? Like how much did you already have prepared? And like how much did you collaborate with Luke in terms of like his place within the campaign and how he would be introduced? Hmm. I actually had Boo as a character concept in the event that Windsor died like super, super like early. I would say maybe about like sometime before episode 100 even. Oh, that long. Okay. Shit. It was like sort of like a rough template for the character, but they were going to be originally like another student, mm-hmm. right? Because in that time, that's probably what made the most sense. But after working with Luke, we decided, okay, we're going to change this concept a little bit so that he, he's no longer going to be a student. We're going to actually give him some like concrete backstory as to how he's going to help basically guide the rest of the party and himself to the next destination, Mm -hmm. which eventually came into the form of, yeah, he's an ex-student who is basically a a scam artist and likes to cause mischief for his own personal and selfish reasons. That's what I was going to ask, actually, just because the fact that when you first introduce Boo, he has the Wildcliff kind of robe, but he's taken off the emblem and put his own face on it. Yes. <laughs> just that. It's very narcissistic. There's something sentimental about it, though, isn't there, of, of keeping the robes? You could put your face yeah, on anything. Is. Yeah, damn. Was the falling out hard? <laughs> You don't have to answer that. That's just, like, funny. <laughs> no, like, we already got what, confirmation what from Ben that too? it's a... Boo tell all. This is the only chance that we'll get to hear about everything Boo related. So probably because you know, I, I he's also kind of like destined or like designed to perish. I guess if Luke can mm. actually kill him, because I may have I may have been a little bit too much of a thorn in his side. I guess. Holy fuck. I think Luke said it in the ep- in one of the recordings. Like, I made this to be like a magic centered campaign like where you know our characters they do have some strong spells but like it's not like you can keep throwing the same spell at somebody a hundred times over to he was not prepared to handle a fighter 
Yeah. And that was pretty evident in the first en- encounter. Maybe that's why Boo got kicked out of Wild Cliff because he didn't have magic. <laughs> well, no. Well, he, he left of his own volition. After- we- We're beeping this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or are Ooh. we? I don't know. I'm the one in control of this. Yeah, that is wholly up to you, Ben. <laughs> Boo seems like a great character to visit. Not necessarily a like character you would want to stay in long term, or at least not for this campaign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the same yeah. way of like, both in terms of like uh, personality, like it's fun to play a scumbag for a short period of time, or like, or to play like a shit stir, or like someone who is going to be a backstabber and get their backstabbed. In the long run, though, it is pretty damaging. So yeah. Hopefully yeah. he doesn't stick around or overstay as welcome. So that's why I'm like, yeah, he's he's designed to perish at some point. So I've already mentally prepared for that. Mm. Don't get attached. Don't get attached. Only Winsler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I miss Winsler. I miss him. What are the mm, party's yeah. perception? Like uh, your like player characters. What are their perceptions of Boo right now? And conversely, what does Boo think of the party? Ooh. Boo is kind of a shit bag, and we do plan on like screwing him over because we know that he's looking for a mm-hmm. coin and that we are going to have to take that from him once he gets it. And so it is very much like, oh, this is a super temporary partnership. But I do yeah. think that Mira appreciates that Boo is able to like get stuff done in terms of we are going here where we are able to work together efficiently. I think that's something that she appreciates. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, like definitely the feeling of like this is just... Like, us us teaming up with Boo is a means to an end of getting Winsler back. And, you know, you can appreciate, because, like, yeah, some things that, like, like how Boo interacts with other people sometimes, you're just sort of like, okay, there's you can just kind of say whatever you want, I guess, in your own head. But, like, there's, like, a confidence in there that you kind of, like, it's, it's a weird, like, kind of you respect it, but, like, man, could you just say something a little less sarcastic and be, like, nicer, please? <laughs> I think integrity is very used to this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dry falls way and welcome to the party. But also it's like you're here merely for us to get Winsler back. So you're just like another pawn in this in this Damn. game. So that's so interesting to me because I see Boo like very much is almost like a potential future for integrity just because of how much they have in common of like oh dry falls like scoundrel like had like is able to get by on like you know a little bit of arcane talent but is primarily like very good in the martial capacity. Well, I mean, Integrity was almost kicked out of Wildcliff after the stuff around bringing artists back and the students dying. So mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Integrity is going to stay in school forever. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> never like, leave this Wildcliff. Is, those are one hundred percent like perspectives that you could only get by like by looking in from the outside and being like, oh wow, you two have like a lot of similarities and. Like, the person who, like, I cannot imagine Integrity looking at Boo and being like, oh, we're a lot alike. I imagine Integrity looking at Boo and being like, wow, you, I'm used to this song and dance, you piece of shit. Yeah, like, maybe, like, not having that ability to self-reflect and see that we are more alike than, than one thinks, but there are, like, a lot of parallels Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there. I enjoy Boo. I'm I'm glad that we have Boo for the for the meantime. As temporary as it may be, I think Boo thinks probably the same towards everyone else. They are a means to an end to him. They are just there to like help him get what he wants. But I feel like there may be like a small part of him that is like, oh man, this takes me back to how it was in like the the good days where you know I actually had some sort of companionship with some people that I met at Wildcliff, you know. Speaking of being self-reliant, I want to take a moment to look back at the deal with Selty, uh, where you all were, Ooh. Ooh. you know, giving up names, specifically Sam. Hi. You might be able to, like, sense where this is going if you're yep. very keen-eared. <laughs> we have Serenath potentially harming her parents by giving Selty their names, and she is also now at, like, really great risk considering that there are wanted posters put up with her like name and face all over the place is she like considering taking more action against the kingdom as a whole or were her actions mostly just about like spiting her parents i think in that moment 
because of the fact that Celtic was like, hey, yeah, like, you know, we can take names. And it was just a moment of like a spark of idea, like, wait a second. In that moment, it was definitely just a spite because like just everything that had happened at like during like the winter break before going to Troil had just been her her parents' fingerprints were on were on all of everything that just basically screwed her over. And in that moment, it was just angry spite. I think it'd be kind of fun if this began, this added fuel to a fire of, I just, everything that is wrong with where I came from, I just want to fix it or just get rid of it. And does she have any idea on what that looks like? I think at this time, because her focus is with us being in Lem and everything like that. But, you know, at I this mean, like moment, that. it's, yeah, like, I mean, like, if Selfie's doing deals like this with taking names and such like and like all she also mentioned like no taking people like maybe it's some a really easy way to just take care of yeah. all of her problems there like rolling back up to Celty being like all right i got a few more names for you prince fred <laughs> uh king and queen hey. what's their faces here let me get you uh the she just peerage. fills out an entire like she's like, an entire scroll of just names of people like hey i have like a list i don't want like here here you go they're yours the curious thing, though, is we didn't see these wanted posters until after the names were given up. So it makes me wonder if there is like a degree of protection that her parents were affording her that is now no longer there because they have, because their names have been given up or. It has been a little while since we because I think. um Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, by the way. Um, oh, no, but you're right. Like it it's been a while since the scandal happened and you had like, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of time at school, you know, where. It wouldn't be, you know, too far fetched for there to be people who are like looking for Saren up or like trying to extradite her from there. Yeah. And it's been because like I think when we first when we, like, we first wrote down the name anyway, Luke specified Luke had a whole description of like, I do still have my parents names like in my head. Like I do still have them. I, we haven't checked in on that, though. Maybe it's already been done. Maybe we're waiting until after everything is done here in Lem. I do kind of have a name already picked out for after all of this, like a proper like civilian name because Marge is now associated with crime and I can't <laughs> use that in my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> oh, are you going uh, to have a name that. change when you get back to Wildcliff? I think d just depending on how everything goes after, because like, again, like you really don't know. We could like get expelled again when we, we might get expelled when we get back. I don't know what's going to happen there, but like, I do have like a name. I I already sent a message to Luke about it because I just heard it one day and I was like, hey, actually, that's a really pretty name. If like once we get out of here, once like the name is finally like situation is done with, like a new name might work really well in this situation. Huh. Interesting. Well, I'm excited to hear where that could potentially be. Yeah. Yeah. We can probably name drop Boo. Oh, yeah. And, like <laughs> just... You know, twist the knife that you left in his back, right? Dang. <laughs> Not only are we uh, taking the coin from you, we're also taking your fucking name. I don't know if you want his name. Yeah, uh. considering the reaction to everyone hearing his name for the first time, I think it may uh, <laughs> not be... <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is actually a really good strategy because now whenever the guards come to arrest Serenep, you just have to say your new name to them and they'll be too confused about why your name is Boob to bother arresting you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll look at you and they'll be like, Boob? I mean, like, I mean, like, there has been a couple of, like, like from the point where the like the royal family and everything last saw Serenep versus now, there has been a couple of changes to her physical appearance, at least. I think a name change will just kind of help cover her tracks, basically. Just, she's wanted and on the run. I don't know. And wanted alive, at least. That's a nice part of it. Oh, yeah. Well, a ni another nice thing is that you all have been, like, very good about keeping your names close to your chests here in Lim, especially when you first signed up for your room, leaving the name of <laughs> uh, Dr. Rustin. <laughs> <laughs> what do you Whoops. have against my brother, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> it was the only name there was panic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Question for Carla, like it was fun to return to Dry Falls and for you to be like, I don't want to see my family. Yeah. Rustin is okay though. <laughs> What's that about? Okay. I think it's mostly like my 
parents, when I think of just like family dynamics, right? We're close in age where anything that I get into, if it's suspicious or something troublesome, he will be the only person in this life apart from my closest friends that I can trust, no matter how much of a shithead he may be. Like, I can't go up to my parents and be like, hey, parents, we're going to hell. Or my younger siblings, hey, buddies, I'm going to hell. Bye. <laughs> you know, like, there's like, I, I sure, I'm sure that some people who have siblings have certain siblings that they can speak certain things about. Oh, and yeah. then others, not so much. Yep. So I feel like with a dynamic, Integrity felt safe to speak to his brother about what's happening. And at least, like, there's someone who knows in case we never come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just That's leave so that scary. with Rustin to have to, like, if, if you inevitably die, just to... Oh, hey, parents, by the way. <laughs> Oops. Uh, hey, Oops. It, it seems like Integrity hasn't been back to say hi for a few, for a little while. I know it's a school <laughs> break. I think I may have some answers as to why that is, but you have to promise you won't be mad at me. Like, Rustin is such a little <laughs> weasel, is the thing. Like, why didn't you tell us? I, she asked me not to. I really am glad that we have now gotten to see the entire Idleberry clan. Rustin was a great addition to that, especially considering the dynamic between him and Boo to a certain extent. Like, I can't... <laughs> it's difficult to say how much of ident... Like, how much knowledge there is between those two. Just because, I don't know, two scoundrels and dry falls, I'm sure those, that circle is pretty small. Now, speaking of being, like, a scoundrel in a place, Sarah, it seems that Mira is taking to Lim like a duck to water to a certain degree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a fair thing to say. I mean, Mira is obviously very disturbed by everything going on in Lem, but I mean, she's doing pretty well in there so far. Got some great gambling results. Got some great gambling results. Like, her decisive action in terms of, like, not hesitating to dominate those guards to avoid combat with them. I think there is a certain... And, you know, I've been, we've been banging on the drum of like, oh, enchantment is the most evil school of magic. Uh -huh. Like, Mira being ready to use it at the earliest, like, convenience. I don't know. It speaks to me of like almost a, um, like a moral slippage. Oh, 100. There's been a moral fucking slippage with regards to Mira for, for the past <laughs> several arcs, in my opinion. I mean, in some ways, it's also a matter of like survival too, right? Like, Mm -hmm. Not only with regards to if we fail at this situation, they will probably kill us, but also even if they don't, like, and even if the life of Winsler wasn't also at risk, like, the the ways that Mira would be disregarding a person's free will by, like, enchanting them in this way would also happen to, like, the rest of the party and worse if they end up getting caught, right? So it's this thing of, Very well, of course I have to, you know, takes one to beat one, you know what I mean? mm I wonder if it takes a lich to beat a lich, you know? Mm, fascinating, mm. fascinating. Fighting fire with fire. Much much to consider here. But I also think, like, on top of her affinity for enchantment that prevents a person from enacting their free will, there's also this desire to, like, make big flashy moves, which is something Mira has been doing in the gambling game and also something that seems very lem. But at the same time, you know, you can benefit from it now, but that works until it doesn't anymore, you know? The rewards are high, but so are the risks. Hey, that's... You're in the right place for high risk and high reward. It's true. Speak of high reward, how did none of you have alarm bells go off when you heard the 300,000 gold price of, like, killing this demon of a Of course of there were alarm bells, but what are we supposed to do? What is the alternative? Suffer, I guess. You know we what, We were gonna That's get, like, fair. taken anyway because they were already aware that we were cheating, so, I mean... Fair yeah. enough. The show like, has to happen. They were gonna either... They were still gonna, like, take whoever, like, had... Like the dice and everything, that whole like they were still going to take somebody. Yeah, and we've been At told many times, paid. "Oh, this is a situation above your pay grade. Oh, you, this is too much for you. Can't handle this." And every time 
Well, Winsler did die, but outside that, we've we've come out successful. You know, <laughs> this is not the first time we have entered an unfamiliar p- plane, encountered a place where a bunch of people were being like oppressed and treated terribly, and then went and killed one of the leaders. I mean, that was one of the first things we ever did as a group together against all odds. And so it's kind yeah. of like true. Yeah, this is a very scary situation, but also we're very scary people. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that confidence. I would definitely say that props to Luke for this, but the setting of Lem is sort of euphoric where like it really like the way that you said it was like high risk, high reward. I am not afraid to do like high risk to get high reward with like this world. And there there's never a point. There's never a time where you feel safe ever, but being in this like space where there's just like you know very corrupt and bad people potentially like especially the fiends having these chains on people it's sort of like i sort of imagine like when we were in there not to reference like something but you know like the one from uh percy jackson where the lotus this is like uh, hotel yeah yeah that's like that's like how i feel being here where like i'm very you're riding high yes yes so that's like the general feeling that i have about this place it also really suits a rogue like more than your other like settings have in the sense of like you know, Integrity is, like, constantly hustling out here in order to, like, use her class features to win big or to, like, find opportunities. And also there's the thought of, like, shit, if everyone here is, like, kind of bad, then you can do some guilt-free thievery. Yeah, I I, I see that. I, yeah. I get what you mean. Have I missed the mark, though? No, no, no. You were on point. Oh, okay, like, gotcha. That's, that's... That's like the feeling that integrity has. Well, hopefully it won't all come crashing down around your ears. Gee, I hope not. Yeah, I've, it'll probably go. You'll probably kill the demon and, uh, you know, free a third of the people uh, at the casino. I'm sure it'll go. Yeah, yeah. it'll just Nothing. be that easy. There's no and more complications or confusion. No twists. Yep, this Nothing could kill really guy. like throw a wedge in this plan. No, and this dude just... guy absolutely trustworthy to like uphill hold his a hundred percent. He gave us so much money, exactly. And he's I not mean, like all rich people person. are good, right? Yeah, that's I'm the theme so of the show. Sure Isn't that, that the one thing that we learned in this podcast that all rich you people get are money good. by doing good things and not stepping on anyone yeah. or anything? Hell yeah! Wow. I mean, us trying oh. to kill him is probably us stepping on something, but <laughs> yeah, money. It's justified. It, it's it's moral murder. Now, before we sign off, I wanted to uh, gauge how everyone feels. Uh, you all have now visited all of two planes. It's Phil and Lim. Which ones do you and your characters prefer? Hmm. Just hearing about the euphoria of this one made me curious. Uh, like, which vibes suit you better? Mm. I am also like, I realize that I am like, Hey, choose between hell and the Feywild. So, like, <laughs> that, it may be a bit of like a loaded question, but hmm. I, I feel like both planes have such nice merits. Like, I don't know why, but the way that Luke, okay, hear me out. The way that Luke described like us like waiting at like the station and like what this place looks like, I couldn't help because like I think he mentioned it in the episode as well. I don't know if it was in the episode, but um like spirited away like studio ghibli kind of stuff and i was like that like gives like because like studio ghibli like when you look at it like even if it's like a really weird scene like it there's something about it that just like it tickles like a nice part of your brain like it looks interesting like you want to look at it more kind of thing so that's sort of how i have interpreted lem like even though it's like a horrible place where souls are being tortured like but it, doesn't it just have like this nice kind of like look to it because that's how my brain has vision has like imaged it basically versus like i'm a huge fan of like nature and stuff so my like like just like going off into the woods having like the whispers in the air kind of thing like i don't know that that that's a vibe for me and so like my favorite place is isithil 
but I that do is not a have... surprise to me. Oh no, I absolutely knew not. When I was, yeah, I knew when I was asking the question, I was like, all right, I know what Sam's answer is about to be. Absolutely, Isithil is. It's either Hell Casino and I or love it. Uh, definitely nothing wrong with Isithil. I think it's kind of difficult for me to really choose one or the other because both kind of fucking suck in yeah. their own <laughs> ways. Because Lem is literally a plane that is covered with fiends and other horrible things. It's clearly it's clearly like obvious that there's no real rules here except, you know, the rule of power, which is demons rule. over. I mean, isn't that the case know, everywhere? True. But I feel like mm. it's basically equivalent to like the sun in the solar system. Mm. Like this is this is what stands out. This is what people really care about here. And that's really scary, especially because fiends are known for, you know, just being, you know, deceiving and horrible but they are evil. um in isothil it's less the creatures that dwell in isothil and it's more isothil itself has its own weird quirks and rules to the point where nature could literally just strangle you if it wanted to we didn't pay the mole toll and this is if gonna you come like back and bite wandered us. too far in some place that you had no clue like where you were you could just be choked to death by a bunch of roots yep. Alternatively, it could also give you an incredible dye job on your hair. So, like, true, absolutely, true. and now you have a tree. It's great. So it's like it's like orderly chaos in both. But I think if I had to pick one, I would probably go with Isithil, just because I feel like I could live there and not fear for my life every single waking minute. Mm. Yeah, like it's maybe. Good stuff. Well, I was just gonna ask if the, if this question is in the perspective of the piece, like the player characters or us as humans. Hey, either or, whichever you feel, you can like give a more compelling answer. Uh, or if you want to give both, feel free. I was just gonna say, I feel like Mira's gonna throw one in for the plane of Lem for a few reasons. Okay. Like obviously, you know, Mira has had the worst like experiences tied to the plane of Isithil. Like obviously, the Ferdinand stuff was very deeply upsetting to her every time they went there there's some horrible thing happening uh, and but i mean obviously lem is terrible too but i think that the main difference between the two planes for mira is the idea of control there's a lack of control with regards to what's happening in isithil it feels otherworldly whereas you know arriving at lem and being immediately morally uncomfortable with things like oh this is a terrible place where people are enslaved but at the same time i think mira feels empowered to deal with it right now like nature is chaotic scary indifferent unpredictable whereas you know enchantment magic and making big flashy bets are within reach so obviously she wants to help the people trapped here she wants to survive there's more Moral outrage, but it's a place where she feels like she can play the system and beat it and thrive. So it feels less immediately unknowable and intimidating to her. I really like that answer. That makes a lot of sense. That is like a very wonderful way of describing it. In my head, I was just thinking, oh, Isithil is like storybook fairy tale fantasy. And then being in Lem is like when you're a baby and like you're three years old or like that age when you're allowed to start walking and then you get put in this park where you can do whatever the fuck you want. Mm. Like, Like the freedom... To be able to control the things finally and not just, you know, like sit there. So my analogy is a baby who is just allowed to play with things versus storybook fairy tale. But my answer is basically Sarah's. <laughs> that actually that makes a lot of sense because <laughs> the context being so different. When you visit Isithel, that was on a school trip where you were like going in and especially initially with a chaperone. You had an authority figure here on your trip to limb on the other hand it is something that like is entirely like self-motivated and there isn't anyone watching over your shoulder like potentially like going to chastise like the closest thing you have to an authority figure here is boo and i don't need to tell you all like how much of an authority figure he is or lack thereof yeah it's just because you're tall <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how the team works isn't it by height yeah i i God, it didn't even strike me how you went from the shortest person to the literal tallest you could possibly be. Especially when, like, becoming... Yeah, uh, becoming Not giant. raged, because you're not... What's the Not a barbarian. Term? The giant uh, smite. 
Giants hmm. smite. Just smite. become big and hit harder. There you go. That's how you do it. And on that word of advice, I will go ahead and begin to slide into the DMs. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, dear listener, thank you for joining us. Please join me after the break. Thank you. Thank you for hosting. Bye. Bye. Stay Bye. giant. Bye. Welcome back to Slide Into the DMs. I'm your host, Nathan, and I'm joined by the dealer of the damned, Luke. Oh, welcome to the table, everybody. Place your bets, place your bets. Mine is that everyone's going to die in Lem. That's my honest opinion. My, I, if I was a betting man, these fuckers are dying. <laughs> I bet that we're going to have a great recording. I bet that this is going to be a great episode. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're going to win. <laughs> Is it obvious that I've only been to a casino once and that I lost all my money and I might have some bitter feelings about that? Oh, what did you play at the casino? <laughs> I played one game of slots and I lost $25. And then I think I played one spin of roulette and lost $25. And then I said, I could dr- withdraw more money from my bank account, but I'm not going to because I'll just lose that too. And it, I don't like losing my money. I, feel, I felt greedier in that moment than I ever have in my life. And I said, no, I actually would like to keep this because I was a poor university student and I had like a hundred bucks in my bank account. I've also <laughs> been to a casino all of one time. I couldn't find <laughs> the card tables and no one was very helpful. They just said, oh yeah, look <laughs> around for it. You'll be able to find it. So then I tried a slot machine. <laughs> I lost like 40 bucks and I was like, this sucks. I'm eating and I don't and then get leaving. why people like I, the other thing about the casino that I hated, which has been represented in the podcast accurately, I have a deadly allergy to shellfish. And at the fucking casino, they had all you can eat lobsters. And my friend said, hey, let's get the all you can eat lobsters. And I was like, please don't. I will fucking die if you breathe in my direction. So that is why the bar and uh, the Silverton's bar and restaurant has a giant fucking tank full of chul is because <laughs> I hate fucking lobsters and they are out to kill me. They are out to kill you specifically. <laughs> <laughs> it's also why crow happens to have, not because that I'm crow, just because in the moment I couldn't think of a different allergy. That's why crow also is allergic to lobster. I think people have picked up on that god. one. Oh my god. I remember like <laughs> the introduction of like, Oh, Crow has his own special separate food supply. Uh, and everyone's like, he's a fucking vampire. He's it makes vampire. sense. It makes sense. You you have to <laughs> you have to keep the blood cold. You have to refrigerate it. And then and he's already wealthy. That's that's vampire 101. He's a wealthy bureaucrat that's or whatever the hell. Yeah, no. It turns out he, he just has a <laughs> just food safety. He, he has a bad tummy. His tummy doesn't like him. <laughs> oh, I'm loving Lem so far. But maybe I'm putting the cart before the horse. You are putting the cart before the horse. Let me do my job of hosting. (laughs) Luke, you know, first things first, been a while since Mm -hmm. we recorded one of these. We're currently, uh, you know, six or seven episodes into the current arc, Mm -hmm. which began with a funeral and is currently going into so many fights per episode. It, you know, you'll (laughs) lose your mind trying to count them all. I mean, I, I can't conceive of how many fights you were able to put into one episode jam in i know it's crazy never before seen <laughs> <laughs> ruling for initiative twice in one episode i know well here's the honest truth it was supposed to be one fight and they specifically boo rolled really bad on stealth so i was like the fight's gonna happen here if the other security guard hadn't have gotten dominated by Nira, weird way of saying it, but that's what the spell does, then he would have just dragged Serenup in chains down to like the chain dungeon. And that's where the Chimera would have come out the well. And it would have been a whole goofy fun time. But instead we got the two separate encounters. That's why you're like, oh, that probably won't make it in actually. I should, you're, are you going to keep in the, we're gonna, it's gonna be in and out guys. Just trust me on I, this. I, I'll keep it in. All right, yeah. This is fun. why, yeah. that, this is why you were like so interested about like, no, 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 don't worry guys. We can make it quick. It'll, it'll be so quick. It'll be so quick. <laughs> in and out, in and out. It wasn't one, it wasn't two combats. It was two half combats. Exactly. But exactly. speaking of Boo fucking up the stealth, mm-hmm. I want to mm-hmm. talk to you about Boo and like the odd place that you're in as a DM. Oh. Yes. Like, 
introducing a new player character into a very established party over 200 mm-hmm. at like episodes into the campaign and you're like yeah all right and here's this fucking guy and no he isn't a student that you already know he's an unrelated scumbag yeah how unrelated he is will i guess we'll we'll see as the arc progresses but it has been like i've always said death is in the end right we're obviously going to do an arc about getting the person back if the character wants to continue playing that character per- the char- the player wants to continue playing that character if Mira died and Sarah was just like, nah, let her fucking rot. I have some other ideas. That would be fine. We could just roll with that. But in the event that these people want to have their arcs ended, right? I think that's a lot of Dungeon Masters is like, there's this small apprehension or at least kind of like caveat to killing a player character, which is, and then their story doesn't really get to end. And for some kind of games, that abrupt ending is awesome. And for others, such as ours, where the seeds are so, the hooks are so longly planted, deeply planted, the seeds thrown so many years ago, it just kind of feels like a wet fart if we, if Winsler died and then we never got him back or anything like that or got closure on that regard. So those two kind of thoughts, one, knowing that death isn't the end, but then also knowing Oh, it's going to be really awkward to introduce like a new character. It's kind of been like this big fear of mine of like, if a character dies, how do we even approach that? I, one of the first questions I asked Ben was like, do you want to play a new character in this arc? Or is this just going to be the other three of them? And to me, that's kind of lame because I, I enjoy playing the game with Ben and we make the show with Ben and it wouldn't be the same without him at the table. So I want him to bring a new character. And then I think he had a lot of really cool ideas. He very quickly kind of came up with Boo as a concept and then we fleshed him out. Yeah, I was going to ask how much you two collaborated on like Boo's backstory mm-hmm. and his place here in the campaign uh so the place was kind of like fuzzy but ben was like i want to play a kind of scummy con man-esque dude who's like kind of like fast and loose with things i want him to be i'm not certain of the class but i'm thinking about making him a rune knight which is like a fighter rune knight easily one of the top tier fighter subclasses if you can't be a battle master you should be a rune knight knight. it's so choice now did that inform the decision to be like okay in that case we should be going to limb because that is where like this type of scumbag character would like fit in really well or was it Mm. all right here you will your character's soul is going to be on limb you should be like making your backup character based on that it was like simultaneous where ben was like i want to play this ben as soon as the episode ended he texted me and was like hey i have a bunch of ideas this is one of them i want to play this kind of like scummy dude and i was like cool that fits really good because we're going to be going to lem and gave him like there's a bunch of fiends around it's like a betting house so and like it's a it's a it's a like plane of sin and like greed and stuff so it fits in really well and i wanted the connection to be because i knew the players we're going to go to Celtie and either try to fight her and take Winsler's teapot or in some way figure out where the rest of Winsler was from her. So I was like, what is the connection between Celtie and Boo? That's the, the things that we kind of like fleshed out together. What is Boo doing in this world? He's after this guy named uh, Quent Persimmon P- P- Palm. It was a weird name. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> it's a weird name. It, who Boo has business with. And then from Celtie, we learn this guy's looking after, the, looking out for this fucking coin. Yeah. The twin coin of life and death. And Celtie's like, I want that shit. And I've been watching this guy since he was a kid. I gave him some dice. Go. Uh, he doesn't know I'm keeping tabs on him. You, like very like uh you know under the table go find this guy uh if you do a favor for me you get the teapot back right that's how Celtic mm-hmm. works you do a favor for you get something in exchange and so then we set up this entire thing where ben has his own knowledge of what boo's like motivation for doing this is and i and we're probably gonna have that revealed throughout the rest of this arc especially as we pursue the fiend of avarice yes. in the next couple of episodes and then meanwhile we also have the the main players or the main characters not that boo's not a main character but we have the the three main like students remaining and their kind of motivation to fuck this dude over and take the coin and give it to Celty, right presumably in the worst case scenario forsaking him and leaving him in Lem in some sort of dire straits, right? And that's just a juicy setup for an arc. I mean, what's fun about that is that 
should they do that? Should he be trapped in limb? You know, this kind of scummy behavior is the type of thing it's you damned a limb in the first yep. place. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so like the in the I guess we'll get into like the full reasons of Winsler being spirited off to Lem in the first place. But I think it's really easy from like a high level perspective to see why one of those deities, if, if Winsler doesn't worship a per- particular god in life, then it makes sense why a, one of these particular deities happens to be pretty keen with him, right? And wants him and pulls him over to the plane. And of it them, makes right? sense like, for I feel like that Lem, like the deal maker, the hustler, to be the one yeah. to have like gotten yeah. his hands on him. Mischief yeah. and tomfoolery, the plane. And, and so we then enter into like that super... Uh, what I find is like pre- a pretty fun setup of these three fiends don't like each other and they run this betting house. It used to be the betting house of the gods and the, the plane you ch- used to ch- changed hands ages ago between the two of the gods and now blah, blah. And now it's like this, right? And I, I think it's like pretty, it's ripe ground. It's a new plane. We have never been here before. It's been like yeah. very loosely alluded to in like, it's just a phase. We saw a single shot of it, right? And so tell me more about like how you re- the steps that you took to flash out limb. Was it just like which came first, the idea of the casino or mm. like knowing, all right, this is going to be our hell plane. If Isabel yeah. is our Feywild like equivalent mm-hmm. in analog, which that is like not one to one, like limb will be it, similar. It's definitely true. It's definitely true, though. Right. The planes originally where I was like poking through stuff, reading things on the Internet, finding other planes that people have made for their settings, either officially published or homebrew and stuff like that, and that I really liked, and then kind of finding some that had like similar motifs or just really interesting kind of like through lines or implications that if they were smushed together would make make for interesting play experience, right? And so for Lem, god of coin, god of mischief. So they kind of like concept of this would be where coin flows freely in this world coin is like attracted to this place right Mm. the people who hold it the people who are greedy and powerful this is a place for them to it's a playground for those kind of people right coin uh, begets so much in this world the god of coin the god of greed you could even say right and then the god of mischief mischief fun a betting house a casino just makes pure sense from those two things combined right if it was just coin, then, like, it being a bank would make sense yeah. or something like that. But, like, if it's coin and fun, a casino is what it needs to be. Mm-hmm. I agree, absolutely. And some people, like, called that shot from a ways away. But I think they didn't also expect it to be, like, mega hell, like, capital H fucking hell as well. And for that, I just really enjoy the concept of fiends running all of these kind of, like, the single pun that must be made is like the pit fiend running a casino <laughs> would be it's just it's too good you it's just really, need to take it's, it right it's good it's decent <laughs> listen it's totally up to par with my level of like pun for the entire arc it we need to hit yeah it, this right? is the probably the best pun you've made all campaign like i can't <laughs> No, 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 the heart of gold being an artifact, that's also pretty pretty up there. Solar energy is positively excellent. It's so good. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. But, like, the concept of, like, oh, I want this to be, like, hell, but they paved over the hell to make it more visitor-friendly, right? Like, oh, you guys used to take the boats down in the river of the damned, but then you would hear the screams of the damned, and people would fall in the river sometimes, or stuff would attack you. So instead, we got rid of all the boats, and we put in, like, the, ch- the, 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 the like, weird person taxis that the little guys, like, the imps run on all the chains, right? And, and it's, like, that's also, like, an allusion to, like, the Vegas experience of, like, getting in the cab, and they'd be like, oh, is it your first time? And you go, yeah! And then they fucking take you on a giant, massive tour. That hey, costs I can, I tell you everything you bucks. need to know. Exactly. And then on the way from the casino back to the hotel, it's like a two-minute, <laughs> or, like, a five-minute ride, yep. right? Because they know you don't have fucking money anymore. So, like, all of these little things I wanted to, to throw in there. I want it to be, like, this place where it is very notably modern it's supposed to trap people it's supposed to bring people in this is a place where if you have money if you have enough money you can get anything anything you can do anything you want in this plane there's no laws there's no limits other than the kind of stipulations of the contracts you sign with any fiends that you meet along the way right better not make any contracts with any fiends in this arc i guess (laughs) 
I guess not. I don't think that'll be happening. What should we know about Lem before going there? Careful about making contracts with fiends. Okay, uh, yes. In fact, we will kill the other fiend for you, <laughs> Mr. Count Fiend. Oi. <laughs> Oh, uh, no hesitation. A measly 300,000 gold. I guess that is worth our time. That isn't <laughs> above our pay grade whatsoever. <laughs> right. <laughs> God. The instantaneous. Yeah, we'll do it. Like just being immediately drawn in. Which is also like the players biting a hook. Yeah, which I but appreciate. It was a hook that I, I thought I would have to bait a little bit more than that. I was shocked at how easily they took it. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things were like because they were so like gung-ho about it they're probably going to do mm -hmm. really well and actually end up with the full 300 thou that would be sick that would actually be if no the outcome of this arc is them if you think your players having a lot of money would be sick and cool and fun <laughs> listen Listen, I've read this rodeo before. The last campaign I ran for these hooligans, they they made a mine. They bought, they just sold a mine off and made a buttload of money that I could not foresee backfiring or in any way. And then there was no, there was no thing. They were just like, yeah, we buy this. How much does it cost to stay in this tavern? We're going to buy the tavern for the night. And then we're going to buy a ship to sail us back across the ocean. You putting us on a different continent? Not even, a, not even, we're not even going to use a magic spell. We're just going to waste a month and go on the ocean. And I was like, um, okay, I guess. I'm no stranger to giving these fucking hooligans too much money. If they make it out with that, it will be over my... So many fiends, cold, dead bodies. Hey, Crow, we're here to buy the school from you. <laughs> oh, How much that to much? Get... No, I mean, the school is... Mm -mm. Wow. Wow, huh? Hey, has Crow ever visited the Plain of Lim? You know, Plain of Coin. Absolutely, he, he has. For business or pleasure? I think a little bit of both. Ah, Lim's business is pleasure, so that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good line. <laughs> um, you can use that. I might steal that. If you yeah. want to steal that, feel free. It, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a bit pat. It's just, it's, Nathan, me stealing from your entire, like, aesthetic and vibe oh, is you just mean, in line with this oh, fucking Oh, yeah, arc. duplicity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the uninitiated, duplicity is the most Nathan-ass name for anything ever. <laughs> and if you want a secret to, like, knowing, like, what, how I, my naming conventions, it's really easy. Just think of what Austin Walker would name something in Friends at the Table and then, like, dumb it down by, like, three or four notches. You know, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm just, like, Naming towns after random nouns or like things that sound <laughs> evocative. <laughs> Gets the people going. Listen, I like it. It's oh, a good style. I right? swear by it. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy yeah. it greatly. And the fun thing about it is when I implement like those same kind of like styles, it feels weird. It feels different from what I normally do, which is give stuff nonsense, goofy ass, nothing names. It feels like, oh, this is a different place. This is a different vibe. They just name things stuff It here, feels right? much more intentional by placing it in the plane of limb yes. rather than it being like, yes. ah, every town in this whole world just has random shit for a name instead of it. <laughs> what I, oh, God. Yeah. 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 I, I can't even talk about my own campaign here because no, like, <laughs> no one is going to understand my own complaints. But like, yeah, I really should have like had the names be different across the continent regardless mm -hmm. Speaking of, like, fun names, Dry Falls, I want to say that, like, we got a fun mm. little look at Dry Falls again. Yes. Yes, we did. I loved this look. Not to say that the one at the start of It's Just a Phase is bad. It's just, like, only the Idleberry House, yeah. really, right? And this is kind of a bit more expansive, like, the kind of, like, vibes of the city. You had to see we Rustin. Did. We did. Carla's specific request to me was... We're going to Dry Falls. I do not want to see my parents or little siblings I because we already met them and saw them. All screen time dedicated to Rustin, please. And I went, okay. And then Ben went, no way. And then I went, no, actually just Rustin still. <laughs> ben, okay, this is the shit, Nathan. I forgot about this until this very moment. Right. I was like, 
oh, they're going to go meet with Boo in the house. Boo's going to tell them a little bit about Lem, and then they will do the little burning of stolen goods, presumably that Boo already has on his person, and then pay the pe- price of entry and get into Lem. And then Ben in the episode was like, I have a little task for you all. Wait a minute. I was like, what? That w- uh, what, wasn't? What, what? <laughs> he said that he was going to test them, and I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, and then in the episode, he's like, I want you to steal from these people. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. I and really then thought was... you had given him that as like, <laughs> no, all right, Ben, we're working together no. here. I'm going to give you this that you hand off to them. I gave him just like, here's the background on everything. When they show up, you can do whatever the fuck you want, right? And he was like, yeah, sure. And then he fucking did. I was like, I per- I planned that scene with like the halfling and all oh, who came and gave him like the lump of which stuff. Which I also want to say. Like, DMs at home take note for, like, introducing a new player character to the mm-hmm. campaign, giving that player character a solo scene before introducing them to the party. That is the mm-hmm. move to make. Getting to see them on their own, isolated, before, like, mixing them in with, the like, the party dynamic. That is the... Yep. That is so key. And when, that, when you did that, it... Yeah. It lets the player... Because, like, when you make a character, you have an idea of what you want the character to be. But that can kind of get fuzzy when you're interacting with the other player characters, right? Because you have to be a bit more flexible. Versus when you interact with NPCs, you can stick to like what your guiding idea of the person was a lot cleaner. And so having like a solo scene with this kind of like ma- this other side character, not an important NPC that we've already seen, it allows Ben to play Boo exactly how Ben envisioned playing Boo as, which then greases the wheels for when we combine into a full party where everyone kind of has this idea, oh, that's what Boo already acts like and can have like some prepared idea of how their character would interact with them, right? And then it also like keeps Ben in that kind of like Boo phase as opposed to letting him, because even in like not, even in bonus episodes, everyone can hear it. Everyone knows when Ben slips into a little bit of a Southern accent, it's because he can't get out of the Winsler state, Mm -hmm. right? And so giving him the solo scene allows him to get out of that phase a lot easier and like greases the wheels of role play. And it was a great idea. I 100% agree. If you introduce a new NPC or a new player character, solo scene. Right. Absolutely. But yeah. Yeah. I just had to take that aside for a moment because yeah, I, like absolutely. I made a special note of like, ah, brilliant mm. move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It also lets me introduce like some of the more plot critical elements in a very controlled manner. Mm-hmm. Right. Where it's like, I want to resolve this boo thing. I'm going to give little clues of where this is going to end up or things that are important for the arc which such as that giant lump of metal which seems to be a piece of a fiend that was left behind where this person got abducted right and that leads us into lem and finding out who does this body part belong to right which is a driving question and that's been completely derailed now by the let's assassinate one of these people thing but listen what's a what's a plot without a side (laughs) plot right honestly it's it's awesome it's like a little playground where I'm, I was like, I have a bunch of rods set up, hooks in the water. And I was like, they can just walk around until they fucking jump on one of these. When I was like, before the episode, this is key. This is key. Before we recorded episode 207 and 208, I was like, hey, Carla. And she was like, what? And I was like, Integrity has like a mage hand, right? Doesn't she have a special mage hand thing? And she was like, yeah, her arcane trickster lets her have uh, invisible spell hand. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I just wanted to check. I was just trying to like, and that wasn't me forgetting. I knew absolutely. And I just wanted to grease the wheels and remind Carla Integrity has an invisible mage hand for the sake of fucking cheating in the casino, in, 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 in duplicity, right? And then Boo has those loaded dice. And so there's a version of this game where they didn't cheat, right? And they just did have good luck. And the fucking guards wouldn't have been on their ass. The guards wouldn't have been like, the dice didn't roll a 12. Let's use a memory spell in the dice and then find out that there might have been loaded dice. And then use locate object on loaded dice, which then get handed to Saren up and then they're just going to grab you, right? It's, it's a beautiful work of art, quite frankly. But those episodes go differently if they don't cheat, right? Yeah. There was different hooks in the water, different things prepared that they probably would have gotten wrapped up with dealing with one of the other fiends because there's the big three right and we gotta we gotta introduce all those fuckers oh right i'm really excited to see the fiend of whimsy with their infinite eyes or whatever the hell their infinite eyes their chilling presence oh Oh. we already saw the one in a very quick scene 
in the first episode that they arrive in Lem, which I believe is 206, my mistake, where she like walk like when they are talking to that person who's like checking oh, them into yes. the hotel. And the person starts like choking because she keeps making mistakes. And then when they go to leave, this person this woman is just standing there. She has like black eyes and like an onyx horn coming out of her forehead and she was like oh thank you i just love well-dressed devils well-dressed devils is such a good aesthetic and i'm so glad that we get an entire arc oh of it. yeah there's just so much there's so much going for this one name a better <laughs> alternative than a well-dressed fiend truly, like what else truly, should a fiend truly. be wearing like armor yeah, what yeah stupid stupid what <laughs> <laughs> oh maybe this is a side note but I wrote a little one shot that I never ran for anyone where one of the encounters, it was like, oh, well, you, the Duke has cursed us all and he's taking us, the, the townspeople, to use it in his experiments and he's cast a curse where we all can't stop dancing. Please help us. And so you go into the fucking Duke's manor and find out that he's just turned any of the people he's invited for tea or people who have been visiting from a different country he's just turned them all into demons and so you go into like the dining room and it's a bunch of demons who in like their beautiful dresses and wonderful stuff that are just chained to their chairs having like a dinner party and like they're like please free us but it's a bunch of demons so uh, i don't know it's you're fun little any counter. contrivance <laughs> to get them to wear cool clothes <laughs> but be demons I think they're like stinky. I forget what the actual name from the Monster Manual is, but they're like he the little stinky ones. They're little stinkers. Uh, oh, there's, <laughs> I swear, there are at least like five different fiends that have some sort of putrid <laughs> stink ability. Yeah, it's great. You know what else they have? Especially devils? Resistance to fire damage, mm. which, ooh, we do. Yeah, tell me about that little, we alluded to it earlier, the encounter mm-hmm. that you had planned. Like, a level 11 yeah. is a tough like that's when like essentially like a new tier of heroics begins mm-hmm. like people get access mm-hmm. to like the next level of shit especially yeah fucking with boo bolero who Ooh, i wasn't prepared <laughs> fighters are really good at you know doing something i wonder if it's in their name <laughs> i was so okay so there's a couple things here one is, I've never ran a campaign at 11th level, or, or or even beyond, this might shock some people, I've never ran a campaign above 7th level. And so, the kind of encounter balance is, it's a strange and new place for me. I don't, I don't know what the limits are, right? So, we get to find those limits together as an audience, right? And oh, I, so, I can't imagine having to run a level 11 combat theater of the mind also. Yeah. That yeah, it, it it's diff- yeah. I need my crutches. Yes, there is a distinct types of monsters and types of abilities that I completely avoid because they are just they use up too much brain space and I can't afford that, right? And there's also stuff that you learn, lessons that you learn as you play the game. I can look back on like the fucking Henrietta Hedrick Our Lady of the Deep fight and be like, "Ooh, stunning." That sucks. I hate that. I hate that feat. Like, that was, like, the biggest pain point that everyone talked to me about after the episode was, like, hey, why the fuck are you trying to yeah. stun us? Don't do that Stunned. shit. Like, yeah, you're very right. I am so sorry. Stunned. Paralysis. Yep. Fucking restrained. Yep. Avoid these things. They're not great. Because your yeah. players won't be able to get out of them. If you think, or, oh, or, they, they're good at that save, they won't yeah. do, they're going to roll low. Yeah. One that I'm also not a big fan of is fear, just because I think it's a bit lame in its current, like, iteration where it's like, oh, you have to, you can't approach them. It's it's just kind of, like, it's fun for the players to use against monsters, but I don't really think of it the same oh, way yeah. reverse, which is why none of the big bads have ever had, like, a fear ability, despite that being so common mm-hmm. amongst monster design. But... We're all, it's a playground, right? I don't know what's going to be really strong. I don't know what's going to be really weak against them. So I'm trying to test the waters here by using lower level monsters. All the monsters that were in display were CR6, except for the Flame Skull, which was CR4. And so the plan, the plan was to have the two security guards bring Sarenath into this little dungeon room. Everyone else would sneak on down. Maybe we would have a fight on the stairs and someone would get thrown overboard. That would have been cool. But instead, 
fight happened at the top of the stairs and then dominate monster creature or whatever just popped out instantaneously. Great, great fun. And so I, at that moment, I was like, it's going to be kind of stupid if when they walk into that dungeon, a chimera just pops out uh, apropos nothing. So I was like, I, I had a backup situation for like at the bottom of the well. So we went with that one instead. And that's like a tip I would have to your to all DMs out there. A plan for, if you want to do stuff like this, plan for in the event that they are detected and in the event that they aren't detected and have two different strategies to go off of because it, it saved my ass so many times to have stuff like that prepared. But then we get into the fight and I'm like, oh, these magic users, ha 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 ha, right? Uh, especially in the first fight. I, and I was like, I think the the there was this false confidence by the fact that Boo rolled lowest on initiative. <laughs> and I was like, dang, these guys are kind of kicking ass. And then Ben was like, actually, no, because I can just kill this guy in one hit, Luke. Which, after this, after 200 episodes, you get into a kind of rhythm of how combats go. Which is, they cast a spell, and then some spell effects happen, and then it won't kill them, though, because they're big, beefy people. Or they make one attack. Yeah, yeah. And then your fighter shows up and he goes, actually, I can make three attacks and then I can do it again. And every attack is with this pole arm and I'm going to stab the fuck out of everything. Also, I'm do, giant. Like, also, I'm a massive, massive man. Also, I can create also, fiery do, shackles. Also, I do X. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. So I wasn't prepared for that. And it kind of made the fights really easy. Although I will say... I really liked the dynamics of how the fights went, mm. right? Having another martial player character has made, and and also the situations I, I've designed in this case were more susceptible to sneak attacks, which is completely by design because I want integrity to be able to be cooler in combat because that is a constant kind of like ask of me of like, the spellcasters get to do their things and I just have a knife and I, I want to do more stuff in combat or get my sneak attack more or be able to be more creative. And so putting it in these lower stakes, like, because if we only ever have a boss fight at the end of every single arc, mm -hmm. then like the kind of like familiarity with combat is not there. So if we have these little sprinkled in little combats where we use lower level monsters who I just think are really cool. And in this instance, since they're going after the Fiend of Avarice and are kind of like in the Fiend of Avarice's domain right mm -hmm. now, I was thinking to myself, like, this is a guy who wants to collect things. He's greedy. He wants all and all of his stuff and more. It makes sense that he might have like a little collection of pets and beasties of his or at his disposal that just wander around, right? Because they're not threats to him. He has them on leashes, those little chains. But if someone else wanders in who's not supposed to be here, they'll get torn to shreds by a chimera and a flame skull and a little oil, like a silly little, oh, no, we fell in water. It's oil. Delicious. God, delicious. So set your Set your players on fire, which then also like just fits with the kind of like brimstone and fire, hell kind of aesthetic mm -hmm. that we have going on. Which is also much easier to swallow when half of the players are tieflings and so they have resistance i let me tell you nathan it wasn't until last night and this is a week after we fucking recorded the episode it wasn't until last night that i was sitting in bed it was probably like almost 1 a.m and i was like oh my god he has resistance because he's a tiefling i completely spaced on it for i was like integrity obviously she's orange she has fire <laughs> resistance boo <laughs> He's pink. He doesn't get fire the, resistance. The resistance is based on color. If you're a blue tiefling, <laughs> like you have resistance barn. to cold. If you're if you have pink, it's psychic. <laughs> that makes sense to me. <laughs> it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm excited to see. Are there going to be more of these like little combats sprinkled in mm -hmm. in Lim? Because it is a bit more of a dangerous plane. Yes, that. That is my hope, Perfect. right? By having more little bitty combats, everyone gets to have a cooler moment in combat more often. Mm -hmm. And then by making them these lower level creatures, it on the back end lets me have a giant toolbox of little toys and pets to play with where it's like, I didn't use a chimera. I've never used a chimera Yeah, why before. did you choose to, a, a chimera of all <laughs> things, you bastard? <laughs> well, I'd already used a wyvern and it was you call it, a wyvern? it was really near... Pardon? I thought it was Wyvern. I think that it's either or, 
Honestly, you maybe know it's what? just my Canadian accent that I call it a wyvern. Hey, if you know how it's pronounced, <laughs> write in on a five-star review on your oh, podcatcher yeah. of choice. <laughs> but I'd already used a wyvern before, and I wanted something that was kind of like dragony, but I didn't want to use dragons because I'm not a super big fan of dragons, and I didn't want to like homebrew some big little thing. And I was like, oh, a little chimera? That feels like something that a collector would keep as like a little fun pet so it felt really perfect there was a lot of other options it does we, feel like it's might... a good pet option right it does i agree mm. <laughs> listen it's the steel from nathan ark okay that's just what it is i haven't even got to use it in the campaign yet <laughs> it was actually either between a wyvern and a so it was wyvern and then i was like maybe a manticore maybe a chimera and i ended up going with the chimera because i thought it had really good synergy with the flame skull to make like a little fire trap That's so good of if the if the flame skull doesn't get a fireball off the wyv- or the chimera can at least get the flame breath out mm-hmm. right on the first turn and that's exactly what happened mira almost fucking kicked it and then the marshal the our rogue and fighter uh sprung to action and started cutting things to shreds mira got to use i just like them using their spell slots honestly yeah, burn those resources it's really nice for me and they still have a difficult fight ahead of them. If they choose to fight, maybe they'll talk their way out of it. Be like, hey, we were just exploring. How's it going? We're tourists. Yeah, give, them, give them a short rest, <laughs> Ref. Let them, let them have an hour. Let Boo get his action search back. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so... I, am, I cannot state how unprepared I was for a fighter in the party. Like, I was like... Theoretically, I was like, oh, it'll make it in- easier for Integrity to get her sneak attack all the time because they're probably... Boo will probably be right next to the enemies. I didn't really think about the fact that he would also be doing damage. I more thought of him as just a big bag of hit points that was going to stand there and take it. And that's stupid of me. Everything on, like, <laughs> on paper for a fighter, you look at it and you're like, yeah, that's... You know, this is very, fairly was, basic. How yeah. much... You know, oh, they have three attacks. 60. Great. Uh, Seraph yeah. can create chain it, lightning. Like, <laughs> and, and then you see yeah. the three attacks and you're like, oh, that's, you can just do that yes. every turn. And then he crits on one and goes, oh, I have piercer too. And it's like, oh, Ben, Ben is good at making NPC. Ben is good at making player characters. Mm-hmm. And the only reason Winsler, Winsler was weak is because he was a wizard. That's it. That was his only thing holding him back. That was it. Yeah. When Winsler ben comes back points, as a fighter, it's going to be insane. <laughs> It's gonna fucking little crazy. Eldritch Knight Winsler like Yoda <laughs> jumping all over the place. <laughs> oh, uh, there's a yeah. Oh, but these episodes are good. I'm I've been having so much fun. There's only the voices. Uh, it's a it's a whimsical, fun little place. You've really been able to be your fucked up little guys quite a bit more with yeah, all the imps. It's been great. I think that fiends by nature make for very. Like they, they they feel like they have this character to baked into them already, and so it's less of me being like, oh, I have to come up with a voice, and oh, they're just a regular person, so they're gonna sound like this. Oh, I'm gonna sound like they like the, sure, all of like the fucking workers at Duplicity sound like that, but when it comes to the fiends, like everyone has such a unique kind of like vibe that I could not do any other voice than what I did for them, like the boat captain Kreshel. Yes, th- that kind of creature who exists in one of the source books, I couldn't envision a kind of different voice that that creature might have, right? Mm. It it has to be a raspy kind of like uncomfortable sounding voice, right? This powerful count, this political player, this person who obviously has been around the block a couple of times has to have this kind of like decadent, like angered way of speaking about them. The imps must sound like imps. It's all firing on all cylinders and I'm enjoying it so much. I'm enjoying it too. And I'm excited to see the future episodes, the ones that you will be recording very soon. So yes, I cannot wait. But in the meantime, as I do wait, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write a five star review on my podcatcher of choice. Oh, nice. Yeah gonna write it down and then i'm gonna post it and then i'm gonna look at it and be like wow that's really good (laughs) uh we truly do share all of those reviews together and a you know big group message which is quite nice it's true we dissect them we kind of like look at the interstitial bits then giggle giggle a bit i find hidden messages in them i know that you're i know that you're putting them there uh and (laughs) 
<laughs> I like, you know, it's very easy for me. I'm quite the code breaker. So like, as I find those hidden messages, I compile them into my yeah. files. <laughs> but let's say, you know, you want to do more than like, mm -hmm. just say a few kind words or leave a secret message for me to decode. Instead, you know, what you can do is toss a few bucks our way. Head on over to patreon.com slash trials and trebs. Yeah. Give us money every month. Yeah, you can get some blooper reels. You get blooper every reel. single month. Every <laughs> Thank you. You, you could be listening <laughs> to this episode earlier, in fact. A little bit earlier. Right when it comes yes. out, rather than waiting like a little plebeian. Yes. Sorry to <laughs> anyone who... Who can't afford? Sorry to the plebeians, yeah. but you know your you know your station. Hey, plebeians, still leave a review. That's five stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the podcast is free. Yes, the podcast is free, and like all yeah. the bonus episodes, all of those things are free. But you can also vote on bonus episodes. You can. You can listen to bloopers. You can get DM notes. You can. What? <laughs> That those are all true statements about the Patreon. <laughs> you seem incredibly <laughs> measured right now. <laughs> no. Where? Else, what else can people do if they want to throw a buck our way? If they want to throw a buck our way. They can, you know, head on over to trebmerch.com. Yeah. And buy a few things. Buy a thing or two or three. Yeah. We got stickers. We got shirts. Yeah. We got... For now, that's it. Unfortunately, I was, I'm sorry. I was about to members. tell lies and like really just like let my <laughs> mind go wild. I was gonna be like, yeah, we got. <laughs> I mean, you could do that. It's Carla's responsibility to get that shit. Okay, up and perfect. Running. So, you know, we can say whatever. We got dice There's, towers uh... that have the like not, and we have nine separate collectible dice towers in order to have the nine yes. towers of Wild Cliff. Nine towers, obviously. You can buy your very own replica Lego model of Duplicity. Yes. It actually has some rare minifigures, so for the collectors out there, uh, if you're looking for some, like, custom devils. It's actually the third, it's the third set where they use the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird, because Wiggles hasn't appeared yet. Yeah. Well, he's off in ephemeral space, waiting. That's fair. But, regardless, head on over to TrevMerch.com, see what we actually yes. have there, verify for your yes. own eyes what, uh, <laughs> what wares we have procured for you. Yes. And, finally, head on over to instagram yeah follow our little social there you can listen to teasers yeah. that way you can be like ah i have that showing up in my feed tomorrow yeah that's usually that's my nice. response whenever i see a teaser in my feed <laughs> my response to seeing a teaser is holy shit i'm so late this is i need to get this up sooner and then just a yeah, mad like, dash to finish editing you're just like i should start editing right uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's already 11 p.m i should get going <laughs> <laughs> and also there's a link to join the Discord down in the description yeah. as well. So head on over there. Come on by. Talk Say to hi. Listeners. Yeah, pop on in. Talk about your favorite bit. It's all chill um, vibes. Goof around. Yeah, you can also see the entirety of the statistics and payout rates for Chalk Block that we played. And I'm so glad that the players didn't realize how to fucking win the game. I, I did so many tests and I was like, damn, they're going to really f figure this one out. And they didn't. But the audience did. S thank you. <laughs> God bless our audience, and you know yeah, what? Yeah, they're amazing. It's a hell of a thing to hear the DM say, our audience is smarter than the players. Uh, <laughs> oh, but in stats. In <laughs> <laughs> Just statistics. And that's all they are. The re everything else, you're dumb as shit. No, you're not. You're beautiful, brilliant okay. listeners who listen to us. Is that the, the sign-off? Yeah, you're beautiful, brilliant. <laughs> we love you so much. Kiss, kiss.